Yeah, so the forum is um, uh, having a two parts monthly. Um, the idea is to have an informal, relaxed platform to discuss or information exchange. And scientific community like us um, provide scientific information to the industry. And the industry can probably bring up what's going on or the issues. So just creating a, a regular opportunities to exchange information. Um, uh, so uh, there are two parts. One is information exchange and presentation. And then the second one is just open up discussion. Um, you can bring up anything you want to present something you can do that too. Um, so as you know, this is more focusing on uh, indoor agriculture uh, technology. So it's also known as vertical farming. Um, this is a fast growing area industry sector and many um, uh, industries are interested, uh, many different players in this uh, space. Um, there are user side which want to, you know, use the technologies to develop something or produce food. There are technology provider side, um, developing a lighting technology, controlled environment technology, substrate, you know, media, water treatment. And then I think what we want to do is creating a space so that we can move both sides forward, advanced in a sustainable way so that more people are successful rather than competing each other. And then that's, I know it's a sort of academic dream, but uh, I want to have a good, um, how do I say, um, uh, 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 contribution for that. So, so user and then also, um, or demand and then also supply, and then also academic as a science provider. So, so just tr try to do that in this space. Kerry? Uh, Eric, uh, very well put. I, the only thing I would emphasize is the, uh, that part, part of the intent of these uh, indoor ag science cafes is to hear from the stakeholder community. What what you're thinking, where, where you see the needs being, and uh, we'll, we'll be uh, here listening and, and wanting to dialogue with you about the right ways to approach that. So with, with that, I think you can uh, launch into your program, Cherry. Okay, so, um, so today's topic I chose is eyes on CO2. Um, um, because CO2 is another important factor. And uh, I know many of you probably working on lighting technology, but CO2 actually complement that lighting technology also. So eyes on CO2 is today's focus. All right. So, you know, it's all technology, you know, CO2 enrichment. It, it, it's a part of the greenhouse technology. Greenhouse industry is actually using that um, uh, particularly large ones having the capacity to inject CO2. Um, and uh, however, the challenge in greenhouses, it's really not many hours you, you can inject CO2 because you have ventilation going on. So as soon as ventilation going on, then you lose uh, tons of CO2 and not much actually captured by the plants. So, you know, in the greenhouse challenges, uh, you know, um, midday when temperature goes up and ventilation start, you can't inject CO2. So it's only early in the, in the morning or end of day. So just effect is very limited. Yet, if you can, you know, enrich successfully, the CO2 to increase to this, you know, 800 to 1,000 parts per million level, which is uh, two to three times higher than ambient level. Then number of research papers said that, uh, and then also growers say, you know, the increase in tomato yield is up to 20%, and then um, uh, lettuce yield up to 50% or 45%. So this is a review paper a long time ago, um, Kimball, um, USDA, um, researcher did this review. So it's, it's promising technology, but practice is challenging. But the right hand side is the chart. You can actually see the meaning of CO2 if you're not familiar with, okay? So if you're not familiar with, so this is a light, total light DRI as a um, X axis. And this is the sort of growth. This is a sort of baby leaf green lettuce. So that amount is very small. This is expressed with the dry mass 
um, rather than fresh mass yield uh, because it's a more scientific paper. But the but the, the basically what it shows is two CO2 levels, high and low, and different light level. So for example, if your target um, uh, dry mass or growth level is this level for this uh, uh, baby green, um, you can actually get the same yield with low light level, with high CO2 concentration, or high light level with low CO2 concentration. So that's the sort of the um, CO2 effect, um, how it works. Um, instead of increasing light, you can actually increase CO2 to, to, to reach the same level of growth. All right, so why CO2 works? It's just a diffusion into the um, uh, uh, chlorophyll or chloroplast. So if you increase that, this is a gigantic stomate, but um, outside CO2 concentration, and then internal CO2 concentration, if the concentration difference is bigger, then you have more diffusion going on. So as long as plants open stomates, then CO2 comes in and then um, help the photosynthesis going. So CO2 alone doesn't work. As you know, it's a biology one-on-one. You need light to drive, and then also CO2 as a substrate comes in. But if you have a lot more substrate and enough energy, then, then you can actually increase the photosynthesis. So that's the sort of basic idea. Um, so this one is uh, um, um, helping you to understand um, you know, how much you lose by ventilation when you apply CO2 in a um, greenhouse or a leaky warehouse um, you know, indoor growing facility. So um, just to give an idea, greenhouse could be very highly ventilated, up to 60 times air exchanges of the volume per hour. Um, when it is closed, probably still have infiltration. So that is about one, one times of air exchange per hour. Um, indoor farms can be contained as small as 0.1 times per hour. And then left hand side is actually showing um, CO2 use efficiency. Um, that is basically the, the um, uh, expressing how much amount of CO2 is captured by plants um, over how much CO2 injected in the system. So if it is 1.0, that means 100% of the CO2 injected are captured by the plants by photosynthesis. So it becomes carbohydrate and building the growth and you know, biomass. So as you can see, the smallest um, ventilation rate, in this case 0.1, is reaching close to 90% usage. Um, so the 90% of CO2 injected in the system is captured by the plants. And then that curve is because of the uh, uh, x-axis as a photosynthesis. Of course, if you have more plants in the system, you get usage you know, efficiency higher. So that's why the curve is increasing. So the vertical farms or indoor facility, probably very high um, um, CO2 activities going on because it has multi-layer system. Um, but the greenhouse may not necessarily because just single horizontal layer system. Um, so that's one difference. Um, and then also that, you know, look at the um, ventilation effect. As soon as you get to 1.0, which is the minimum ventilation of greenhouse, usage rate down to 40%. Um, and then 10, 10 times the exchanges, which is not as high as the max, you know, the 60% or 60 times ventilation, it's already, um, less than 10% usage. So, I, and then, so that is basically telling how much CO2 you lose when you try to achieve, um, um, you know, high concentration in the uh, in the greenhouse type of uh, system or the warehouse type of system. All right. So you are dealing with crop production. Um, your um, yield is very important. Biomass of the plant is very important. So um, let's assume this is a current um, yield, 100% level, the, the present level, and you want to increase 30% more to, to, um, to meet the cost or to, to, uh, to meet the demand, for example. 
So let's say current condition is whatever the condition, CO2 and light intensity. PPFD, by the way, is the unit for the um, uh, measuring uh, uh, photosynthetic active radiation. So the plant-based uh, unit to, to quantify the intensity of light. But anyway, whatever conditions right now, it's a, a, the current yield is th this level. If you want to increase 30%, 40% more, there are many ways um, to reach that level, assuming this level is not optimized yet. So one way is, yeah, let's increase the light because it's light is currently in this case, as an example, only 150 micromoles. Plants can take higher light. So that's one way. The other way may be CO2, right? CO2 enrichment. Um, the literature says that let us can increase uh, biomass by 45%. So yeah, let's increase the CO2 and then reach that 30% benchmark increase or a combination of those. So I started thinking, what is the cost? You know, if I do only with um, lighting, supplemental lighting, increasing intensity in a, a vertical farm or the indoor growing, or just CO2, let's find out the cost. So, um, so this is a little busy chat, I understand that, but I walk you through this. So I, what I did was basically trying to find out how much does it cost to increase the same increase of yield. And then in, in this case, I did grams fresh rate yield. It could be kilogram, but it's, it's probably a little confusing. So I, I, I did a small unit, grams unit. You know, one, one more gram of fresh rate. 100 times you get 100, you know, grams more. And then 1,000 times you get one kilogram more. So left hand side is the um, uh, lighting electricity cost. So the lighting specific electric cost um, to increase one more gram just by lighting. Right hand side is um, a CO2. So that assuming you have already lighting, and then increase um, um, the fresh mass by one more gram, um, either per day, whatever the unit is, um, uh, by CO2 only. So the bottom line is I was doing this and I was actually honestly was surprised by this difference. I didn't expect this much of difference. You know, basically to order magnitude cheaper if you take CO2 approach. So, so let me, so th these values can change and th that's why I, 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 I put the key variables that is affecting the, the, the final cost. So the left hand side, again, this is electric cost uh, to increase one more gram of lettuce yield. You can consider per day or whatever. So, I, so the, the first variable is uh, um, productivity of lettuce. And then I, I, I did the um, data-based analysis, my scientific data and some other people's reporting data. And I took the conventional or conservative value, seven grams per mole of light um, received by the plant. Um, it could be 14, uh, 15. I think Carrie Mitchell did very, very productive um, uh, uh, lettuce production um, data. And that's probably 14, 15, I think, um, if I remember. So if you double, you, you get more uh, or less cost, right? Half. If you double this, you get half price. Um, the second value is uh, um, uh, basically inverse of the first number. So how many moles you need to get um, one more gram of lettuce yield increase. The third one is the electric efficiency of the lighting technology. So this is an indoor growing, so 100% electric lighting. So this is directly affecting the actual energy cost. Um, electric energy cost. And then I took also, this is now conservative value. A uh, couple of years ago, this is a great value, but now 3.0, 3.5 is norm, or maybe it may not be norm, but it's, it's achievable number. So this could be improved. So that would also further this down. Um, and then use efficiency of photon, um, is uh, basically how much photons actually falling directly over the plants. You know, that if lighting design is not good, then um, 
most of the night probably illuminating other locations of the facility or walkway or in between plants, you know, teeny tiny plants. So this is also critical value, but I took 100%, just one example. Um, and then electric electricity rate 10 cents per kilowatt hour and that's also depending on facility contract and negotiation with the uh, power company so those numbers would affect but i just get this set of data as an example or starting point to consume the cost to increase one more gram um, of fresh weight that is 0.2 cents by electricity uh, for lighting versus uh, CO2 was 0 0.0012 cents per gram fresh rate. How did I come up with? Um, basically, I, I wanted to know how much carbon one gram fresh rate had. So starting with dry mass ratio, how much dry, you know, solid component in the fresh rate. And then I took 8% as a sort of, you know, uh, um, typical, dry mass, it could be 10%, depending on the uh, conditions or species. Um, so that would slightly change. 40% um, CO2 use efficiency, considering one time they exchange. So it's, it's not as leaky as greenhouse, but not as tight as the, the very tight uh, 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 indoor facility. Um, so I, I took 40% usage. So that means 40% of the carbon injected in the system is actually become the part of the plant and then contribute to the yield. And then a CO2 price, which is, I looked at literature, I listened to somebody uh, who is doing similar type of analysis. Um, so 50 cents per kilogram per CO2, uh, uh, 50 cents per kilogram CO2, and then convert it to carbon cost, which is 14 cents per kilogram carbon. Um, and then just uh, um, uh, uh, included that uh, in, in this uh, computation sense per uh, fresh rate. So, so this exercise um, show that if you can, well, first of all, indoor facility, you have opportunity to inject CO2 constantly regardless. And then since the CO2 cost is, 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 it's not as expensive as lighting cost at this, at this point, it, it, could, it could get really close, you know, if you work with the lighting technology. But at this point in my analysis, it seems like um, it's wise to actually strategically use CO2 to minimize the lighting cost as much as possible so that you can increase the profit. In, in my quick, quick analysis. So um, my take home message is here, um, you know, when managed well, not losing too much CO2, um, or even, you know, relatively managed well, CO2 cost are much lower than lighting electrical or electricity cost to increase the same amount of uh, fresh rate of um, uh, product. Um, in my exercise, it was lettuce. Um, so CO2 is obviously is a good tool. So I like to encourage um, um, to, to consider that. However, CO2, not, C, not just CO2, but you, you want to pay attention to other factors and then CO2 and light needs to be co-optimized, co meaning optimized together um, so that your profit level is uh, maximized. Um, as I showed you, you know, by increasing CO2, you may be able to reduce or you, you don't have to increase the lighting anymore. Um, and then um, since CO2 management involves the ventilation management at a certain degree, um, HVAC system needs to be considered to optimize. Um, particularly, I understand humidity is a big issue, um, uh, uh, not just uh, other factors. Um, so, so HVAC, uh, needs to be included when you do that, this kind of um, optimization. So I guess that's pretty much um, end of my talk, um, uh, uh, eyes on CO2. <laughs>